What's going on everyone? I hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. Today we're going to be doing a one month update on the honey grommy tank that I built. Things have been growing in really nicely so I'm super excited to share what's been going on so let's get to it. So the duckweed and the water lettuce has completely taken over this tank and you know I think I'm just gonna embrace it. I think it looks wonderful. I know duckweed is a pretty divisive topic in the aquarium community. Some people absolutely hate it but me I don't have a problem with it. I think it looks natural and a lot of the fish in here do prefer low flow environments with high coverage and the fish in here seem to be enjoying it so I'm just gonna leave it be. Now the floating plants in here does indeed block a lot of the light from the stem plants, you know, at the bottom of the tank, but that's really not a problem. The way that I go about this is I leave the light on for around 12 hours a day, and every morning I make sure to move all the floaters over to the right side of the tank, giving the left side an ample amount of time to have their photo period, and throughout the day, as the floating plants move back over to the left side, the plants on the right side get their photo period in. So. So that's sort of how I handle it, you know. I leave the light on for 12 hours a day and with the coverage being accounted for and things just moving around and the lighting dynamic changing throughout the day, everything gets a good amount of light but it's not getting too much light where we get algae. Shortly after filming the original build video for this aquarium, I ended up switching to a different filter. This is the Aqua Clear filter and um, yeah, it's rated for 20 gallons and it's been working really well. As you can see, there's a little reservoir in the back where you can put your filter media and your activated carbon. And yeah, this filter's been getting the job done. I like it. One problem I did have was the flow wasn't necessarily too strong per se, but it was going straight down into the water. What I did was I cut a little piece of plastic out of a water bottle and I just wedged it under the filter, on the hang on the back filter. And as you can see, this causes the water to simply just skim across the top instead of going straight down. And this is great for pushing floating plants away from the filter instead of sucking them underwater. By the way, this is not my idea. I got this from MD Fish Tanks. This channel is awesome. Moving on from the floating plants, there's been a lot of growth on the ground level of this aquarium, most notably the Valsen area. The Valsenary has grown to be over three feet tall at this point, and I'm not necessarily surprised that it's doing well. Everyone knows that Valsenary grows incredibly well, even in low-tech tanks, but just the rate that it's been growing, it's just obnoxious. It's, it's crazy. A lot of people ask why I use Valsenary all the time, and to be honest, it's just, I enjoy it. I enjoy the unpredictable behavior of it, and it's just fun to watch it grow in and take things over. Another thing that I'm particularly excited about is the baby java fern that we have growing. As you can see, there's roots growing out of the java fern leaves here and a new rhizome is forming. Pretty soon we'll be able to cut this and it will become its own plant entirely. So yeah, that's pretty cool. I'm really excited about that. Moving on to the next plant of interest, as you can see we have some Lobelia cardinalis here and I was particularly excited about this plant, especially in a low tech environment because I don't really see a whole lot of people in the hobby using this plant. Most applications that I see this plant being used is sort of that of a mid-ground carpeting plant and CO2 high-tech tanks. But as far as a foreground plant and a low-tech tank, I haven't really seen it being used. So honestly, I had no idea how it was going to turn out. But 
yeah, it seemed to be growing really well. I have two stems of it in this tank and it's pretty much doubled in size. So yeah, I think I'm gonna go ahead and propagate it. If you made it this far in the video, first of all, thank you so much. You're awesome. Um, I hope this video is relaxing and informative. And second, you probably noticed something. You might have noticed that there's a lot of dirt-like substance around the edge of the aquarium. This dirt-like substance is called detritus, and detritus has been a topic of controversy in the aquarium hobby ever since the aquarium hobby was a thing. And yeah, you're probably thinking, detritus is dirty looking, why would I want it in my tank? And yes, figuratively speaking, detritus is dirt. It's organic matter that has been decomposed and broken down. However, at the end of the day, this is a functioning ecosystem. So when you completely remove detritus and make the entire aquarium completely spotless, you're removing the bottom layer of food for the bottom of the food chain. With all that being said, obviously, yes, still test your water, make changes to your aquarium as you see fit, but where it stands with this particular aquarium, the detritus is highly beneficial. So yeah, we have reached the end of the video, more or less, and um, yeah, overall, I'm really happy with the way this tank has turned out. Things are looking beautiful, and yeah, I do know it only has been 30 days, so it is too early to tell if this tank is considered a success, because hopefully it'll last longer than just 30 days, right? But so far, things are looking very promising, and things are looking wild and overgrown and natural, and I couldn't be happier. Me personally, I've always found these update style videos to be more rewarding than the actual aquascaping videos themselves because it shows the hard work finally pay off. Not that I don't enjoy making aquascaping videos, but there's something to be said about seeing everything grow in a month later and seeing things thrive. It's just extremely satisfying and rewarding. So yeah, that's it. Peace everyone.